And so I, I'd like to uh, hear from you a, a little bit about what makes San Diego unique from an Illumina perspective and being here in Illumina. The other thing that we talked a little bit about is uh, you've been uh, incredibly successful at evolving your company culture and yet keeping kind of a consistent focus on the kind of culture that you wanted at Illumina. And uh, you're up to 4,100 employees, I think, right. today. Uh, so I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, and, th and then the third thing uh, is I think we've got a, a lot of uh, young CEOs, new company CEOs, and folks in senior management in the audience here, and, and uh, a little bit of your perspective for, for them on uh, at what what your principles are in terms of keeping the focus on, on uh, moving the company forward and, and maintaining the culture as well. Sure. Um, well, well, San Diego obviously is where, where Illumina was founded. Um, when I When I came here, there was a quick debate about whether to try to move the company to the Bay Area. And the decision, I think, was the right one was, was to keep it here. Uh, San Diego is, is you know, not only the center of sequencing, but a major center in, in biotech and life sciences, as we all know. Um, the, the environment here in San Diego is incredibly conducive to companies like ours. It, uh, you know, we have access to tremendous talent, particularly uh, in, in the science field here. Uh, with, with the great university programs we have and the other companies that are, that are uh, in this area. I think it's a much more collaborative environment in San Diego business-wise than what I found in my career in the Bay Area where uh, it's much more competitive. Where here I find in sessions like these, people are much more willing to share ideas and to learn from each other uh, and, and the kind of institutions that exist to facilitate that are, are distinct here compared to what I found uh, in the Bay Area. And having said that, you know, San Diego doesn't have some of the kind of resources that we need, and we have to go elsewhere to look for those. And so, you know, if there's a challenge to San Diego, it may be around diversification, because if we're looking for optical engineers, you know, there aren't that many optical engineering companies in San Diego. So mm -hmm. that activity we do largely in the Bay Area. Uh, and, and so in specialty fields, uh, the Bay Area is, is much more diverse just because of the size and the different types of companies you find in um, so we're geographically distributed. About half our employees, plus or minus, are here in San Diego. Uh, we have actually four facilities in the Bay Area now, uh, partly because of acquisitions, but we're consolidating up there. And then we have major facilities in Singapore uh, and the UK as well. Talk a little bit about the culture. That, uh, I, I, I know from all the conversations we've had over the years that um, you've just been remarkably successful at maintaining focus and yeah. keeping the company on the track that, uh, and you see, you told us you do a yearly strategic planning process, which we I do. think is probably quite unusual. I told the company is maybe three years or five years. But, uh, yeah, we do that for, it lasts 11 months, too, so we have one month a year that we're off from strategic planning. <laughs> we have a very definitive cycle that, that goes 11 months of the year and produces a refresh of the three year strategic plan. Uh, but, but we have been very thoughtful about our culture, so, uh, you know, in my prior company, we set up a culture that I liked a lot. And, sort of brought that uh, to Illumina. And we were very specific about trying to define what it was and what the core values of the company uh, were. Um, probably two years after we, you know, I got here, we articulated those values. Uh, turned out it was sort of too long a list and not memorable. There were 13 of them. They were a little too wordy. So about six or seven years ago, we went in and simplified them and came down to five core values. And, and, and a lot of what we do, uh, at least for our type of company, is, is in uh, our passion for creating great products. And so innovation in our DNA sort of stands at the top of the list for us. And, and, and that implies that we're willing to focus um, on taking bigger risks. You know, a lot of public companies get uh, risk averse pretty quickly because they don't want to put the company on the line. And, and we don't do that. We, take risky, we make risky decisions all the time. Uh, and, and I think when we drop back to our values, that's how we are able to articulate the framework uh, that we use to make those kind of decisions. We don't do science for science's sake. So there's a, a lot of our competitors that were founded by purely scientific CEOs that did a lot of sort of sandboxy research and didn't really focus on getting products to the market. And from day one, our whole passion has been this relentless pursuit of delivering great products. And so uh, that's been fundamental to, to our culture. And as we've grown, you know, one of the challenges is you know, how do you maintain that when you go from 25 people to 400 people to 4,000 people. Um, and, and we've tried really, really hard to build scalable processes that allow us to run like a big startup. And, and so we constantly are focused on knocking down bureaucracy, 
uh, the way we develop products is in small core teams that have a very definitive process to go through, and they only have to report up when things go wrong. And then they have uh, you know, very clear phase gates, and they can go through that process as fast as they possibly can. Uh, and we literally write a contract with our development teams. So they come to us and they say, here's what we need to do it, here's what we're going to, and so we need these resources, and then they tell uh, the, the, the process managers, here's what we're going to deliver feature-wise, here's what it's going to cost, and here's the time frame. And we literally put signatures on a line and make a commitment to each other to do that. So that means we have to give them the resources. If we do, they promise to deliver us that product per the specs. And then if we go out of bounds on either side, then we have to sit down and have an interim review. If we don't, they go all the way through the process without us. So it's very scalable now.